Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and I'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please share the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Sabah, and today we're investigating yet another portfolio optimization technique, which is the Stutzer Performance Indicator. And that relates to a very notable goal that many fund managers, portfolio managers have, that is to minimize the chance that your portfolio would underperform a particular benchmark. Again, managers face sort of scrutiny when their funds or portfolios underperform benchmarks. So it is quite useful to potentially optimize a portfolio with the probability of underperformance in mind. And uh, this quite nicely relates to the mathematics of sharp ratios and the logic of probability decay. Given the fact that if the expected return of your portfolio is higher than the expected return of the benchmark, eventually, as time passes, it becomes probability zero that your portfolio would underperform over a long time horizon. Again, it relates to the benefits of long-term investing. For example, if you invest in stocks for 50 years, it's virtually probability zero that you'll lose money on net. It's very likely you'll gain quite a lot on top of your investment. Whereas if you invest for a shorter time period, let's say a year, it is quite likely that you'll lose money on net. The same logic can be translated into net outperformance of a particular benchmark, say S&P 500. And here we have got 10 large US stocks and we'll try to form a portfolio that as surely as possible will beat S&P 500 over a long time horizon. And for that, we'll introduce the concept of decay, which is related to sharp ratios. Because uh, sharp ratios are very useful when the normality assumption is not violated, Stutzer has actually proven that this uh, optimal decay portfolio that converges to zero probability of underperformance as time goes on is equivalent to a maximum sharp ratio portfolio if returns are normally distributed. But in the real world, they hardly ever are, and skewness and curtises considerations, as well as higher moments considerations, um, lead us to the need to model this optimal decay explicitly. And that is where Stutzer has developed the Portfolio Performance Index um, procedure that allows us to optimize this um, decay process uh, explicitly and arrive at optimal weights. So that's what we're going to do today, as well as we're going to compare this procedure with the more common and conventional uh, maximum Sharpe ratio procedure. So let's first calculate daily returns using uh, total return indices for our stocks and the index that will determine uh, out or underperformance uh, based on. So total return index today over total return index yesterday minus one. Again, we can drag it across all of our 10 stocks plus the benchmark and then force it throughout. Again, we have got 10 years worth of data, quite a long sample period. Then we'll input our baseline portfolio that will be equally weighted. So 10 stocks, so one over 10. 10% in each of the 10 stocks. And then we'll keep track of the sum of weights to make sure it's always 100%. Then we can calculate our portfolio return, which is a sum product of our stock weights that are locked throughout, and the returns of individual stocks at a particular sample day. We do not include S&P 500 here. We'll use it only to determine our excess returns and the probability of underperformance. So we subtract S&P 500 uh, returns from our portfolio returns in each of our sample days. And that would lead us to first calculate our Sharpe ratio, which here would be an equivalent of an information ratio, as we are interested in our uh, annualized outperformance, as well as in our um, active volatility or our tracking error in this regard. So if we calculate our daily excess return by just 
calculating the average of excess returns across the 10 years of our sample, we'll get an excess return of one basis point per day. And the variance of our excess return or our outperformance can be quite easily calculated as well. And that would be um, our daily uh, tracking uh, variance in this regard. And if we want our sharp ratio, or in this case, information ratio, we can calculate our annualized excess return by using product of one plus individual daily excess returns raised to the power of one over 10, as we have got 10 years in our sample and subtract one to get our excess return in terms of um, the percentage. So we've got annual outperformance of 3.48% and our um, annualized tracking error or active volatility would be the sample standard deviation of daily excess returns scaled by the square root of 252, that's around 252 trading days in a year, approximately. That gives us an active risk or active volatility of 6.61%, and our sharp ratio, or in this case, it would be an information ratio. We calculate the ratio of the two and get a sharp ratio or information ratio of 0 0.53. Uh, as Stutz's uh, performance index optimization procedure is quite complicated, again, comparatively to uh, more uh, conventional, more straightforward optimization techniques, Stutzer suggests a two-step procedure to make the results more reliable, more robust, and less likely to fall into a local optimum. Stutzer suggests that first, we maximize sharp ratio. That would be an equivalent of uh, maximizing the performance indicator subject to the normality assumption. So for that, we can go to data solver and uh, specify that we want to maximize our sharp ratio by changing our portfolio weights, adding a constraint that the sum of weights is equal to one, and that all of our weights are non-negative. Again, you can uh, allow short selling there, and the procedure will be exactly the same. So if you want to enable short selling, you can just uh, leave this uh, restriction out. We untick the make and constraint variables non-negative, um, criterion for further optimization when we also have to optimize the decay rate theta. But for now, we just maximize our sharp ratio as usual, and that allows us to construct those optimal weights. We can see that we have quite large exposures to uh, Apple and Google due to quite high returns these companies enjoyed over the past 10 years, and we have got zero returns in um, those three companies as their return. Uh, risk trade-off was not very attractive from the purposes of sharp ratio maximization. This allows us to estimate the um, starting value of our uh, decay parameter theta, which is the negative access return divided by variance. That uh, gives us a decay parameter of uh, minus 11.42. That's what we can use to then calculate the exponents that correspond to the decay process. So we can calculate exponents of theta, which we lock as it's the same across all of our observations, times our portfolio access return. So return of the portfolio minus the return of the benchmark. We can calculate those exponents for all of our observations. And finally, we can calculate the uh, Stutzer portfolio performance index that we will maximize by varying both our portfolio weights, as usual, as well as the decay rate theta. For that, we can calculate negative natural logarithm of the average exponent across our sample. And that generates a Stutzer performance index of 0 0.0021. Again, uh, in terms of its absolute value, it's not very interpretative. We just want it to be as high as possible. For that, we can modify our solver task. Now we are maximizing our Stutzer performance index. And apart from being able to change the weights, we can also change theta. So we specify another variable that we can now vary. And that allows us to improve our Stutzer performance um, index. And our decay rate is actually now improved from minus 11.42 to minus 11.48. However, this improvement is not very large. And we can see that our 
portfolio weights have also slightly changed to reflect a different optimization procedure. Now, our optimal decay calculations include non-normality considerations that are observed in the historical distributions of those stock returns, whereas sharp ratio maximization does assume normality. We can see that some of our stocks had their exposures reduced. For example, Apple exposure is now slightly less, whereas Domino's exposure has increased compared to the maximum sharp ratio uh, portfolio. This reflects that um, higher moment considerations for Apple are less um, attractive to investors. Perhaps it has to do with negative skewness or positive exoskepticism, whereas for Domino's, it's relatively more attractive and therefore a procedure that uh, takes into account higher moments when uh, calculating uh, the optimal decay of underperformance probability favors those types of stocks. And this is the portfolio that, uh, given our historical data, has the highest decay rate in terms of the probability of benchmark underperformance. This portfolio, if held for a sufficiently long period of time, is the most likely to outperform the benchmark and therefore minimize risks subject to underperformance and potential scrutiny that fund managers or portfolio managers might face if their portfolio underperforms a particular benchmark. And this is the implementation of the Stutzer Performance Index for the optimization of uh, portfolio underperformance probability decay and optimization of portfolio weights. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm making you see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics of that to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.